Yay! I'm so excited. All right, so we gonna, we're going to get started, you guys. I am so stoked to have a mix of leaders on here, by the way. Um, as y'all can see, we have the wonderful Jennifer Anderson, and she's going to be leading this. We're going to be leading this together, really, um, and hopefully going to be able to give you guys some breathability on some things you can let go as a leader, some things you may want to pick up as a leader, and some things you won't like at all that we have to say, and that is totally okay because leadership is 100% not a one-size-fits-all at all. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get started, Jen, do you want to, do you have anything you would like to say? Um, I mean, I, I'm just excited about this topic tonight. Um, I think it's really needed right now in our sense of community in our, in 2024 direct selling industry, you know, we're talking about being a leader that lasts. Um, and I, you know, I don't know about all of you guys, but like, I mean, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. Like I, I am never leaving Sensi. <laughs> they, they will have to drag me out. Like I am never leaving Sensi. Um, and I think that that's kind of rare, right? Today, like you're not, you're not hearing people say that about any company that they're with. And so I hope that we can give you a little bit of insight on why, you know, lasting and sticking around, like what a difference that makes, but also some tools um, and maybe learn from our experience. What a, combined, Chloe, what have we, I mean, you've been in this, you just had 10 years last year. So 11 years. I had 10 years, two years ago. So okay. 12 oh, so years. Yeah. That's how fast okay. 2023 was, by the way. Wild. So, what? 12, so 12 years and then yeah. I'll celebrate 14 years with Sensi this year. So combined, we have 26 years of experience here. And I mean, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot of experience. And I hope that you will learn from, um, our mistakes. And like she said, you might not like some things we say, and that's okay. You're allowed to not like them and you're allowed to lead differently. Um, but proof is in the pudding and we may know what we're talking about. So truth hurts. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited because also we are both very similar in where pe what people see is what they get from us. And I think people know that. And so I hope that when you guys hear this or if you're watching the recording that y'all know that like this is truly like our cards are about to be on the table with truly like we want to help you guys do it better. And that's something Jen, I always tell my leaders, like, I want to help you do it better and quicker. And mm -hmm. if you don't have to go through so much, you know, so many stumbles along the way, but also we're going to talk about that in some of the questions. Like, I believe a lot of that has to happen because you can't just take the easy road all the time. So mm -hmm. let's go. Yeehaw. You let's ready? Go. Yeehaw. Time? You ready for your first? Ready to fire. Um, I mean, you want me to you want me to question you first, or you wanna you wanna hit me with one? So Chloe, Chloe and I are doing Q and A tonight. We have questions for each other about lasting and leadership in our journeys, and so hopefully, hopefully you are ready. <laughs> you were gonna ask me first, weren't you? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I think so. So, um, when Chloe presented me with this topic, and I said. I said, Hey, like, why don't we do it Q and a style, right? Where you ask me some questions and I'll ask you some questions. Um, and so on the topic of being a leader that lasts, this is what I said to Chloe today. I said, look, there are so many companies to partner with in this space. There are so many ways to make money in the direct selling industry. There are so many ways to make money online, social selling 2024. There's a lot so my question to you, Chloe, is why do you continue to choose Sensi and only Sensi? So it was really crazy when you sent me this question because I literally didn't know how to answer it because, and it's so weird because you just said this, um, I am so bought into Sensi that, so number one, I chose Sensi and I choose Sensi because of the core values. So we'll just start there. The, the authenticity, the simplicity, the generosity, our core values are like through the good, the bad and the ugly. They like they are anchored to that and you can feel that. And if you guys have been to a Sensi event before, like, you know, the feeling and you just know what that culture is like. Right. And so um, I joined Sensi, and when I did, I never first of all thought I would do direct sales at all. And so whenever my husband got my kit for me and it came in, I was like, okay. 
this is it. This is the only direct sales company I'm going to do. Like, I'm not going to be a hopper. I'm not going to go to like the necklaces or the bags or do all this. I'm going to go all in. And if this doesn't work, I'll just keep being a nurse because this is great. So from the get go, I was what you've always kind of taught me, Jen, like tunnel visioned. And this is something Jen talks about often, but I was very much so all in. Like I was, I jumped in. There was no like, I'm not going to sponsor. I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to take advice from successful consultants. I was like a sponge and I still am. And I think that's important um, mm -hmm. in success, right? And so for me now, the reason I continue to choose Sensi is anchoring off of their core values with the way that I want my family's life to look and the legacy I'm going to leave them and the freedom um, that Cincy gives me and has allowed, allowed for us to live the life that we live. And like, you know, insert, insert, insert um, income disclosure, it will be on this call, but you know, Justin's open businesses um, because we have had that ability with me being able to just do Cincy, you know, and like Nathan has been able to retire, Justin's been able to retire. And so um, it grew along the way, but I think the most important thing, Jen, for me and what I want these leaders and listeners to hear is that I was all in. There was not, that didn't mean I didn't have doubts and wasn't insecure. And I mean, Jen has literally watched my entire journey and a lot of y'all have seen it. If you saw my old YouTube channel, I shut a lot of it down, but like I was, it was me. Like, this is me from here and we're growing and we're getting smarter and we're learning. But like, I always was all in and it wasn't just like, oh, I, I'm so passionate about just the product. I love the product, but it was something more. And it's hard to like put it into words. And I can't wait to see Orville on stage because I'm going to be like sobbing because like just the way he is and how much he loves us. He's like, a father. And it was so different stepping into Cincy than any other job I'd ever had like in my life. So it was the buying in for me. And then just seeing that their actions of their core values were and always have been true and real the whole time, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I want to, I just want to follow it up with like, so like there's never been like a sparkly, new trend or company or like shiny carrot that's ever caught your attention or thought maybe I don't even want to laugh but it's just so comical because I I'm sure Jen you've had people to like reach out about this groundbreaking opportunity and it's just so icky and gross number one when companies do that so if they're doing that to y'all let that already be a red flag um but I either just don't respond or I will like sometimes be on one and just send them a long response of like, number one, like you follow me, you know that I'm all in on Cincy. Um, and so, no, I've literally, I've never been like, oh, it'd be cool to sell like nutrition. And I love nutrition. I love wellness, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not it's not it for me. And I think when I made that decision from the beginning, and also I was, I've taught my team that from the beginning, right? Don't do more than one company, especially if you're going to do leader leadership. And my, my leaders know that, like, I don't recommend that. And I think there's this weird social, like, oh, make multiple streams. Like that, listen, like, this is not like to like to know it and shot like this isn't like that's not how it is. You can't do multiple direct sales companies. And I know, actually, I'm not going to go there. But I'll just say I've seen consultants veer away. And I can already see when they start doing another company or doing getting paid off certain things. I can already see I'm like, man, they're not going to build leaders anymore. They don't even get it. Like they've lost it because once your team starts seeing you do those things, they lose this sense of trust. Like I know for a fact, Jen, and I'm sure your team would feel the same. If your leaders started seeing you sell something else, it would, it would disrupt them, you know? And so no, like I've never, it's, cool. it's encouraged Justin to want to like, do some of his dreams right but like those are his you know like and so 
No, it's literally just Cincy. That's it. That's the only direct sales company I will ever do. Period. 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 So Good. are you ready for your question? Go on, hit me. All right. So this is to follow up kind of going along with what Jen asked me. So the second part of this so throughout your time in Scentsy, um, we've seen a lot of other consultants that have not a lot, let's say just consultants in general, right? Go to other direct sales companies because of the grass is greener on the other side concept or mentality. Um, or we have seen consultants try to do two direct sales businesses at the same time. What advice, because this is real life, what advice would you give consultants that are in this situation right now? So um, I think that there's been this weird shift over the last couple of years where there's this whole mantra of multiple streams of income, multiple streams of income. I want you to hear me clearly. I'm a huge fan of multiple streams of income. Okay. But um, that doesn't mean multiple direct selling companies. Okay. Here's what I want you to know. I'm a fan of multiple streams of income as in you sell Sensi, you can have another career if you want to, a nine to five, you can be a nurse, teacher, doctor, I don't care, you can do whatever you want to do. But I'm a fan of multiple streams of income as in investments, rental properties, starting other brick and mortars, right? Like I'm a fan of that. I'm not a fan of a multiple stream of income and you wearing four different hats and selling four different products because it it does not makes sense. And you can convince yourself all day long that you are living into this multiple streams of income dream or whatever is trending right now, because that's, that's really a trend on social media. And it's a trend in social selling this idea of multiple streams of income, but it's a complete and utter lie. And all it's really doing is distracting you from finding great success in one thing, because I know zero people who are a part of multiple direct selling companies who are really successful in all of them, let alone one. They're kind of like, like, why would you be a part of four different companies or even two different companies to make 200 here and 400 here a month when you could be a part of one and make a thousand or 5,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 in a month? Cause that's a real deal. That's a really, that's a real thing that happens. Um, in see the income disclosure statement results, not typical, but um, my, 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 here, here's my thing. Okay. You said, what's, what's your advice? My advice is to choose, freaking choose, make a choice. Okay. You have to choose between one or the other. And in, in order to do that, you can make a list, make a list of pros and cons. Um, and I, I want to give you some advice that might ruffle your feathers, or you might be like, no, I don't believe her. And that's fine. You cannot. Um, but I want to tell you not to follow your heart. Don't follow your heart. Your heart, the idea of following your heart and doing what makes you feel good is so, it's like the worst advice you could ever listen to because your heart is so flippant depending on the day, the mood, the season, what's trending. You could be like really excited about something one day and the next week you're not, your heart's not in it anymore. You're no longer passionate. So don't follow your heart and don't like be, I loved what Chloe said earlier. And I even wrote it down. I wanted to talk about it too, because it's not about a passion for the products. I don't even think you have to be passionate about Scentsy products to be successful here. Just so you know. I freaking love our products. I love fragrance. I love smelling good, but you don't have to be passionate about our products to be successful here. You should be passionate about being successful you should, and successful is managing your schedule. Successful is having influence. Successful is money. Successful is whatever that is for you, but you should be passionate about success, not passionate about our products. So I want you to choose because here, here's the last piece of the puzzle. When you're part of a direct selling business, remember you are building a business. You're not just selling products. Okay. You can't build multiple businesses and have a doubt. I mean, if someone's going to come join you in the business as a consultant, what company do they join? <laughs> Pick one. Like, do we spin a wheel and choose? 
you can't do that. You can't have four different companies that you represent and have someone who wants to join your team, but like you don't know which team to put them on or like what company to put them with. Your, your, your job is not just to sell products. It's to build a business, to build a brand around that business and to build a team and a downline and influence and leaders and help people change things. And if you have multiple things you're doing with doing that with, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be wild. No one will take you seriously. Nobody will know what company to join. Nobody will trust you. Um, and when you don't have trust, then you truly have nothing. So let me just follow it up with one more thing, because I have had to have hard conversations with leaders that have been in two companies. Most of them were really successful, like after the conversation. Um, but I know that there's some leaders that are going to watch this or that are on now that have leaders that they see potential in, that they know, and they have that trust with that leader. What do they, how do they approach them about this as a leader? What would you say, or you and me are maybe different in this aspect. Would you not say anything to them about it? Would I not say anything to who? Say it again. Like if you had a leader mm -hmm. who was doing two direct sales companies and they're a leader, so they're like going to track, they could be a director mm -hmm. and you see them kind of juggling both. Mm -hmm. How would you have that conversation with that leader in the essence of generally like getting to the point of, look, I, and I've told leaders before, you really should pick one because you can't a hundred percent both. How would mm -hmm. you approach that situation with them talking to one of their leaders about them doing multiple direct sales? Um, so I, if if, if this, you know, if it's someone in my downline and they're doing this, like I, I, I won't talk to them about it un until they start to affect the rest of my downline or the rest of my business. Right. But if so, I, if someone's going to make that choice, like they know how I feel about it. I've, I've talked about it multiple times. I'm very public about the fact that I think you should only choose one and be in one. I'm only sensey all day. And I will, you know, don't play, I will not split. I will not join another company. I'm not going to. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, public and sure in that it's not like it's private information or no one has a clue. Right. So if someone wants to do that and make those mistakes and those choices, that's on them and that's fine. But if you start to poach people in my downline or talk to my downline about it, then hell will break loose. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mean in a way I don't own anybody. Okay. And everyone has the right to make their own choices. Um, but I also have like a little bit of like a mama hen, you know, and these are my little baby chicks. Um, and I want people to be, I want people to be free to make their own choices. Everyone should, everyone, yeah. should. but it's, it's my job as a leader to at least educate. I'm never going to tell someone what to do, but I'm going to educate them on, Hey, you know what? I've been there or I've seen people do this. Let me, let me tell you what I've seen or let, let me give you my perspective. Um, or let me, let me show you what I, what has happened to someone who went down this road before. Yep. I love that. Okay, good. I think that was super helpful for them because they will cross that path, especially. It's, it, it, yeah. it's, it, it's going to happen. And let me just tell you this. If you can, if you can right now, if you can right now learn that you don't own anybody. Okay. And ditch your expectations of other people. It will make your job easier because you're your heart will be free to give without expectation of return or without, without expectation of them uh, following your directions, right? Like I, my, your job as a leader is simply to offer and coach and mentor and train, but your job as a leader is never to make someone do what you say. So if you can understand that from the very beginning that you don't own anyone and it's not your job to make someone work or show up or make the choices that you would make, then I think it allows you to be a little more open and free and vulnerable as a leader. And you can give better that way. That's Amen. Love it. Next. You're up. Next. Okay. So um, let's see my next question for you. Ah, if you could tell your younger leader self anything, what would you tell her? You've been a leader for a long time. You've been an SSD for eight, seven, eight years at this point. So um, if you could tell your star consultant self, your director self, anything, what would you tell her? 
Oh, y'all, me and Jen have been through this, y'all. So <laughs> we have been through this. I have talked to Jen about so much. Um, and it's because, as y'all can see tonight, number one, like our leadership and business styles are so different, but they're both successful. But also, I learned so much from her. And I'm sure there's little things she learns from me. But there's big things. Shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, but the biggest thing um, that there's a couple things I would tell my younger self. Number one, and this is literally something Jen told me a long time ago. I don't even know. I used to just like be like, Jen, this is what's going on. And she'd be like, no. <laughs> so um. The first thing I would tell my younger self is to take emotions out as much as possible. Okay. Listen, listen. Amen. It is not worth it. It is not worth disrupting your inner peace, your health, your family. I love the fact that Jen just kind of talked about like we don't um, need to have these expectations that they are going to do us the way we do them. And for the longest time, I used to not understand why are these people doing this to me? These people that I loved and still love everybody. You can love, you can love everybody, but you don't got to let everybody in and you shouldn't. And that's, that's where you will get hurt the most. So you've got to be very careful and you've got to take emotions out of it. Like this is a business. My emotions need to be sacred to like my home, my husband and my closest friends and like my stepmom. Those are the people that get to see the vulnerable, all sides of Chloe, right? And so to definitely not be so emotional, like not be so emotional and um, not be so open that the pain hurts so bad. And it doesn't mean you have to be cold, you guys. You can still, yeah. I had four coaching calls this week and they were fantastic, but I do them different now. I'm not opening up to these people about my family, my life, my health, Um this is a business and you can still lead and coach and love. But when you open up too much and Jen has seen me go through it, it only hurts you. And if you are working this hard to be in this business and you are bought in and you are all in, you, if you learn this principle early on to just try your best to take emotions out. And I used to think when Jen would say that to me, like, that's so cold. Like, how can you take emotions out? And there is a cost if you don't. And there also is a balance, right? To love your people and to show the love of God and to show that love, but also to be like, this is how I'm going to show the way as a business owner, because I don't want this to happen to you, right? Because how you lead, they will lead, right? And so that's what I would definitely tell my younger self to really just understand the expectations that there people don't do unto others anyway. So I don't know what I was thinking, how it'd be different in a competition type business, um, which it's not with everybody, but with some people, it can get that way. And that's where things start getting weird. Right. But when it comes to emotions and, um, really just learning how to, how early on to set that boundary. And so you don't project. And so you don't, so you can like really run a business and grow and either way, I've, I've led all the wrong ways and I've led a couple good ways. I finally, 12 years later, feel like I'm on a path, but I also wrote in my notes, like, I know that God had me on this path for a reason and I don't regret any mm -hmm. of the things that I went through because I'm human and mm -hmm. God is still using me today, right? And so also, if that is you guys, then you have found yourself really not leading um, in a way that you know is like wise, or you know that you're letting emotions get the best of you. And like, it's a, it, it'll affect your business. It's affecting your marriage. It's affecting different things. Just 
get, put the fire out and do it different tomorrow. Like look out of the windshield, stop looking out of the rear view mirror, stop talking about it. That's one thing too. When I would tell Jen something, she'd be like, we're done, we're done talking about this. Like we don't need to talk about this anymore. And that's the thing too. There's a time you guys where you can talk about it and then drop it off and let it go because you're carrying things that were never yours to begin with. So that is my best advice. Good. Love it. That's that. Okay. All right. Now moving on. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Okay, Jen. Oh, <laughs> so, we all go through peaks and valleys, which mm -hmm. Cindy talks about a lot and Orville does too. So we all go through peaks and valleys in our businesses. Tell me about the lowest point that you were at in your business and what you did to climb out of it. Or if there were some low points, it, it doesn't have to be super deep, but just something um, you remember to where you, what was it and how did you climb out of that? Yeah. So um, when you posed me with this question, there were actually three different times that just it like immediately came to my mind. So I want to share all three of those times with you because maybe um, you'll resonate with one versus the other. Um, but I can, the, the lowest points in my business are um, the first one is I had four solid years, four years. That's a long time where I was a consultant and I was um, earning annual sales and annual mentor both every year. Um, I earned all of the incentive trips like for two or the top tier, or if it was like a top 150 or top 100 or what I earned all of that, like the biggest prize you could earn. I earned it. Um, I did all the right things, lots of sales, lots of recruiting, lots of follow-up. I did all of the right actions and I had zero growth, zero. So the beginning of the year and the end of the year look the same for team size, my paychecks remained the same and I was doing all the right things. I was, I, you would have looked at my like accolades and thought like, damn, this girl is doing the thing. And I was doing the thing, but like nothing was changing. My paycheck was staying exactly the freaking same. My team size wasn't going anywhere and my title didn't change. And it was frustrating. And I think sometimes people can go through that time, but like, I mean, they'll give it like two or three months and be like, I've been doing everything for three months and nothing is changing. Four years, years. That's eight catalog seasons. Okay, it's a long, long time. So that's one point. Um, another point that I can think of is, it's not a specific point, but I wanna share this with you because I have been through some difficult points in my business um, that were brought on by other consultants. Um. I've been through difficult points in my business where I have been uh, lied about. I've been lied about to other consultants and I've been lied about to customers. Um, I have been shamed by other consultants to strangers that I don't even know. And they met me and they were like, oh, you're Jennifer Anderson. Oh, I've heard a lot about you. Strangers, complete and utter strangers. Um, I have been compared to other leaders um, and have been told to my face that I'm a terrible leader and why am I not like so-and-so? Why don't I do the things so-and-so does? Um, people have said that I tried to steal their downline. People have said that I only um, care about money and I only work with those that I'm making money off of. And if I don't make money off someone, then I don't care about them anymore. Um, and those have all, those are all very real things that have happened to me. And that's tip of the iceberg, but those are all real things that have happened to me throughout my career from other consultants. Okay. So that's number two. And then number three, um, before the birth of my daughter, I had a miscarriage and um, it rocked my world. And I went to a very deep, dark place personally, and I took my business with it. Because of my personal struggles that I had going on, it affected my business.
business too. And my business went into that deep, dark place of personal struggles. So the question that Chloe asked me is not just, hey, what were the lowest points in your business? But she said, how did you get out of it? And that's what I really need you to hear tonight. Because if you have are at a low point, that I want you to hear how I got out of it. And if you're not at a low point or you've never been there, there will come a day. And they will happen because valleys happen just as much as peaks. And that's something I think you really need to understand. When we recruit people into this business, you've got to be transparent and teach them from the beginning that our businesses don't, they're it's so for you. It's not just like this, like an upward slope the whole time. It's like this. La, 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 la. And the peaks are great and the valleys are really low. And they're all normal. They're all normal. Okay. So remember this. Someone said this, they said, you can quit. You can absolutely quit, but you can't quit on a bad day. Okay. So never quit in a valley. Okay. All right. So here's, here's what I did to get out of these low points. Um, very simply, I just moved. I moved. Moving is so valuable in your business. When I say I moved, it means I took action. Motivation doesn't come first action comes first. And from action, you produce motivation. People sitting around waiting to be motivated, waiting for sparks to fly, waiting for ideas to come, waiting for the sun to shine and then to feel great. And no, you just have to move, move. I moved. I took action in my business. Remember this, a business in motion stays in motion and a business at rest stays at rest. And I've said this so many times in reference to a business, but also in, with your downline, it is so much harder to reignite a flame that's gone out than it is to go and like build a whole new fire. Okay. So like once your flame goes out, like once your business has stopped having motion, it is so much harder to get that freaking relit than it is to just like keep it going the whole time. Okay. So I moved. Um, secondly, I fanned the flames of my passions outside of Sensi. Um, because I had, uh, for many years, like Sensi was my entire life, like 24 seven living, breathing. I didn't do anything but Sensi <laughs> ever. I didn't go out. I didn't have friends that weren't in Sensi consultants. I didn't like wear clothes that didn't say Sensi. I lived and breathed and thought about Sensi 24 seven. And I never did anything else. And that that's actually can be detrimental to your business. Uh, number three, um, I moved my office outside. I worked on my back porch because sunshine is valuable. Sunshine is so good for you. It might be, you might be sitting here being like, seriously, are you telling me to go outside? Yeah, I'm telling you to go outside. Sunshine is a mood booster. Sunshine gives you so much beautiful energy and excitement. And it, it releases things in your body that you cannot get inside. You need sunshine. You need light. You need fresh air. There's so much value in doing that. Um, next, I preached the gospel to myself. I preached the gospel to myself. The gospel is another word for the truth. So I preach the truth to myself day in and day out. What's really true? What lies am I believing here? What is what is really happening? And it's because sometimes I think we can believe these lies or we can see only, you know, kind of like what's happening here and we lose sight of the actual truth and the actual gospel. And so I would daily have these moments where I preach the gospel to myself and I'd say, wait, what is actually true? What's really happening? Who am I? Whose am I? Who loves me? Who finds value in me? How was I created, right? Like all of these things, I preach the gospel to myself. Um, next, I created dream boards in a way. I know that sounds cheesy, but like, and honestly, I'm very honest. I haven't done that in many years, but for those times, reminding myself of what my dreams really were was so important because they were my dreams. It was my dream and my paycheck and my family and my business and my life. And why was I going to let it be affected by the words of someone else? Or I wasn't seeing immediate gratification with growth or my emotions and feelings while very real going through my miscarriage. Was I going to let that distract me from what my ultimate dreams were for my family and my business and my life, right? 
so kind of like putting that dream right in front of your face and tying your business to that dream and how can your business make those dreams a reality for you? And lastly, um, I surrounded myself with good people. I surrounded myself with good people. Your, cir your circle is so important. Who you allow to speak into your life is so important. You have to choose wisely and protect that. You cannot let, let everyone have validity in your life. You cannot let everyone's words like hit you to the core, okay? You have to choose whose words get that kind of valuable place in your heart and in your brain. And I surrounded myself with people who were smarter, wiser, stronger, richer than me. You want to be the dumbest person in the room. You want to be the youngest person in the room. You want to be the poorest person in the room. Surround yourself with people who do it better than you. And that'll bring you out of your low points. I don't even know what to say. If y'all didn't just write all that down, y'all <clears throat> y'all are going to have to rewatch it because everything that you said, Jen, I have been through almost all of those things. I have not been through a miscarriage. I cannot imagine. I love you. And I'm so sorry you went through that. Like yeah. the fact that you were able to overcome that and um, that, that speaks volumes. And um, I can say though, one thing I want to add on that really, I'm just going to be a little bit vulnerable with y'all um, with a valley that I was in about three years ago. Um, I literally remember being in my kitchen. This was like mid 2020 and looking at my husband and going, I literally don't know who I am anymore. And mm -hmm. I had completely lost myself because I was, everything was sensey. All my friends were sensey. I wasn't doing anything outside of Sensi. Um, like literally had no friends except Sensi consultants, um, which I do not recommend that. Um, I always had Sensi shirts on. Like my whole identity was like picked with that. And so I stopped doing coaching calls that year. I I literally cut everything off because I was so distraught. And then went through some situations with downline where I literally was like, I can't trust anybody. Like I can't. And so I'm saying this because when you said, Jen, that you had to start speaking the truth over yourself, this is the thing, y'all, when you get in such a hole in your business where you're telling yourself you're a failure, where you're believing all the nonsense that people may be saying about you. I've had so many people say so many lies about me. And at a certain point, I looked at Justin and I was like, did I say those things? Did I do those things? Like these outside opinions were morphing this disbelief of somebody I, I wasn't. And so I had to learn and really get into the word. I'm a believer, Jen is too. So whatever you guys do to pull yourself out of dark holes, for me, it was like spending time with Jesus, worship music only. I had to protect like my ears at all costs. And I had to start speaking the truth of what God says about me. Because yes. when you stay in that place for so long, you start believing like these full out lies that just aren't true. And if yeah. you don't, start going on the up and up with that. Like it, it almost took me out. I'm not even gonna lie. Like it almost, I almost was like, I can't do this. Like I cannot. And for some reason, God was like, just stay. I'm going to handle all those situations. But I just wanted to add to that, Jen, on the fact that you said the words that we speak and the words, the truth, mm -hmm. even if you don't feel it, I didn't for a long time. Yeah. Speak what you know is true. Yep. So yeah. So good. So good. So good. Okay. Next. Um, all right. My last question for you. You guys hanging in there? Doing good? Okay. Uh, last question is what is the number one tippy top priority habit that um you should have when it comes to building a sustainable business and being a leader that lasts? Number one. All right. So the top tippy top tip. So I actually have this tattooed on my arm and Jen has already said this, but my top tip is to move, to take action in your business, take how you feel out of it, 
People are going to fail you. Your systems and your actions will not fail you. And I promise you, I was literally talking to one of my leaders today about this. You will look at yourself three months down the road and you will be so proud of how you climbed and sustained and um, powered through. And that doesn't mean you don't take care of yourself. You need to, everybody needs to deal with themselves when they're going through things. Like, your upline is not your counselor. Like some of y'all need legit help. And I'm going to be honest, like I'm in therapy so I can say this. So uh, that can't, you have to do that, but don't stop. Don't stop moving. I heard this from Carol Bishop, like a few uh, months ago. I don't even know if it was in January at leadership. It was somewhere, but she said, eventually everybody rolls up. So mm -hmm. stay, don't quit when it gets hard. Talk to me and Jen are one of y'all's uplines. Talk to one of us when it gets hard. We will tell you. I literally told a girl today, I said, you can slow down. You can have some time to, to take a little bit of time to yourself, but do not stop with your customers and do not give up on your business. I will not let you do that when it gets hard. I will not because I can tell you right now, if I would have let some dumb situations take me out, I would, I would be so mad at myself right now if I gave up on that. So honestly, to keep moving, to stay in rhythm, I don't care if you're walking in place at a certain point, just don't stop moving. Don't, don't stop, have systems to protect your habits. So when you're going through hard times, that's why I preach systems to every one of you, because every business has them. You've got to know what you're doing when you go to work. You've got to know how you're selling. You've got to know how you're following up, recruiting and leading. Y'all know that. But the reason that has to be so protected is because when you go through hard days, which honestly, there's a lot more hard days for me sometimes in Cincy than joyous, depending on the season or depending what I'm going through with my family and stuff. But my systems and my habits and my movement, the way that I have trained my brain right? To package orders before I got on this call. Movement is true medicine and you will never be disappointed in yourself for like showing up. Do you have so, anything to add Jen, to that? Like what your top, what, you know, what's your top tip? Isn't that, is that your question for me? No, that's not your last question. No, I don't remember what your last question is. I I'm was, like, I feel like it might be though. Wait, is it? Is yours the same? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> kind of. Okay. I'm like, I feel like that's your question. You I know. swear I did not. Um, <laughs> I did not copy you on that. No. How do we do? That's awesome. Okay, never mind. So okay. yeah. So they're me, kind of the same. Yeah, so they're kind of the same. So I'm going to move on to your last question. And then we'll leave a couple minutes open if y'all have questions for Jen or myself. So Jen, your last question I have is... What are, what is the best practice, practices, advice, tips that you've received, that you've received, that you still use to this day in your business? And this was actually a question Justin wrote for you. Oh, um, you know, what's so funny too, is like, I actually have my answer for that, but Chloe and I did not share our answers with each other prior to this call, but so many of our answers have been echoed right? So many of the things that we have said, you hear us sort of echoing with each other. And so I think that take note, take note of that. Um, because even though we're different and our businesses look different, there are principles that remain the same. And there are principles that successful people do these things, right? So take, take note of that. And I, I, I just want to tell you this too, before I answer this question. There are so many different like ways to be successful here, but these principles are the freaking same. They, they will carry you. Notice we're not talking about parties or PRV or booking or like how to, how to recruit someone, right? But what all of those things are figure outable, like so easily, if you can get what we're talking about down. And what we're talking about is what will sustain you and help you be a leader that lasts. Um, so I have I have a couple of things. I wanna I wanna first tell you though, 
what the worst advice people have given me are that you should never follow. And um, that one, which I also said earlier is to follow your heart. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Um, make logical decisions and logical choices and use wisdom. Don't just follow your heart. I'm a fan of following your gut and gut instincts. Like I get that, but it's different than just following your heart or doing what feels good. No, doing what feels good will lead you to destruction. Okay. Doing what feels good will lead you with the, will leave you with a business that fails you and doing what feels good. I mean, you may not feel like doing anything in your business, but you may feel like what, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever else that's actually detrimental to you. So don't follow your heart. Someone once told me, fake it till you make it worst advice ever. Okay. I'm not a fan of putting on a face or not showing the real deal or not telling you like what's really happening. And I think this is important as a leader, you're, you need to be transparent with your downline, never in a way that they lose trust in you, never so transparent that they lose trust and that they don't, they don't respect you. Right. Because if your downline doesn't trust or respect you, why the heck would they like care about what you have to say? Or why the heck would they do what you're asking them to do? Um, and the last one is someone told me in the very beginning of my business, never let them see you sweat. Lies. Let them see you sweat because they, they're, they're going to sweat. Things are going to be hard for them. They need to see you sweat because they need to see you overcome. So you can model that behavior for them too. Okay. Um, but here are the best tips that I use still to this day. Um, and this is, this is so crucial, so crucial. Separate your actions from your emotions. This is such a touchy feely business. This is such a weird business where we only work when we feel like it, or we only work if it feels good. Uh, and you guys, that will, that will destroy you. That will destroy your business. You will not build a business that way because I don't know who always feels like it. I don't know who's always in a good mood. I don't know who always is feeling great about themselves or their life or the path they're like separate your emotions from your actions. I don't know who doesn't have a fight with their spouse one day or their kids aren't acting crazy or they're, you know, looking at me, whatever, or someone didn't cut them off on the road. I mean, you're always going to have emotions, but separate them from your actions. Okay. You can, you can not feel great, but you can go still put your running shoes on and go for a run, right? You can be feeling sad, but you can still take the action and put your running shoes on. You can be feeling defeated, but you can still take the action of going to your office and looking in your order history and sending a text message, okay? Separate your emotions from your actions. They are not the same and they shouldn't be the same. Along with that, create habits that carry you. Just like Chloe talked about, your habits will carry you. Your habits will carry you. Build habits. Habits are what build a business. Habits are what sustain you. Habits are the things that you do every single day without fail, day in and day out, no matter what, or every week or every month or whatever. Habits are the things that no matter what is going on in your life or your person or your emotions or the weather, you still do it build habits and you'll build your business. Um, and then when it comes to leadership, if you want to build the business, build the people. If you want to build the business, build the people. Chloe knows that Chloe's excellent at building the people. If you're lucky enough to have her in your life. Yay. You, if you want to build the business, build the people. Okay. Model Chloe is modeling that behavior for you. So do what she's doing and, and build the people. Um, and then lastly, make them want your job, make them want your job. Um, if you're complaining, if you're whining, if you're commiserating, if you're bitching about something selling out or not being available or some kind of glitch on the work, like nobody wants to be a part of, that. <laughs> nobody wants to be a part of that. If you're sharing what's great about your life and what's great about your business and what kind of joy this business is bringing you, what kind of blessings are happening because of your paycheck, what kind of relationships you're building, if you're like, make people want your job. So those are the, that's it. Ah, oh, that's so good. That was yeah. just, I was, it was great. Y'all, it's the emotions. Take those emotions out. Y'all will. 
they're separate they're separate they're not they're not the same they're separate the only one that gets hurt with emotions is is you sis so it's not them i can tell you that right now so that is that all of them are key even the habits all of it so um i just love you and thank you so much um, you too. do y'all have any we have like five minutes anything that y'all would like to ask me or jen any like any bravery out there <laughs> i dare you we are a triple ready. dog dare you <laughs> y'all better be ready for jen though i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm, I'm never ready for jen that's why i'm very careful before i ask jen anything i'm like am i gonna be ready for that but it's yeah. it's because it's the truth and a lot of people don't want to hear the truth so but the truth is your friend. Okay. Any it is your friend. I, I always want to hear the truth. And, you know, maybe that's something we should leave you guys with. Like, be be humble enough to hear the truth. Even, even as superstar directors, like, we still have to be learning. We still have to be growing. We still have to be challenging and editing our own behaviors and looking at our business and saying, like did I suck at that? And can I, can I get better here? And how can I, how can I grow? What can I change? Who can I learn from? You know? So two questions. The yeah. first one, Jen, really quick is from Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Hey, girl. So her question is, what advice would you give to a leader who has lost their title? They have lost the majority of their team and they have lost their momentum. That, 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 that's a big one. And I know a lot of consultants have been there. They, I think it's, I think it's part of so many people's journey and story. Um, I think, I think moving is really important. Like we talked about earlier, just moving. You're not going to have motivation. You're not going to feel like it. But the, the, the biggest thing I can tell you is that winning is that way. Okay. Don't try and rebuild what you once had build something entirely new. Okay. Winning is that way. If you're looking back at what once was or how you once felt or who used to be on your team, but is no longer, it's only going to distract you, distract you. Winning is that way. So whatever you have to do to like cut it off, take it to the curb, like paint it black, like start completely, whatever you got to do. Winning is that way. Oh, so good. And to add to that, um, leaders go first and you talked about this i think at sfr yeah sfr right it was yep. literally the best training i've ever heard you do by the way i don't know what it was there's something about it um but that stuck with me um through hard seasons in my business and someone asked a question i think it was nikki said like what's um currently the hardest thing in your business the hardest thing for me always is going first because nobody sees we are like scrapping and digging away for you guys. And, and, um, that's what y'all have to do as leaders is, huh, it makes me emotional thinking about it because it is so hard to go first because nobody sees on your team, what y'all are doing, but just know that y'all aren't the only ones going first. Like we're going first too. And, um, it's worth it. But that's, that's currently like always the hardest thing in my business. Jen, is there anything right now in your business that is currently hard for you in this season? Um, I mean, if I, if I'm being transparent, I feel like, I feel like, like fitting it all in is, is hard for me right now. Um, you know, like there are so many things that I want to do or things I, or, you know, things I want to be or places I want to be. And I think fitting it all in is really hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely hard on myself. Um, so hard on myself. I'm like such a critic of myself, um, which makes me a high performer. But as I've grown over the years, like I've learned, like, don't, you know, major on the major and minor on, minor on the minors. Right. Um, I think fitting it all in is, is really hard and just sort of deciding, um, you know, what, what's, what's worth my time and energy. Like, where am I going to get the most bang for my buck as far as income producing activities? Because I think my business and probably all of yours too, have gone through a little bit of an evolution over the last two years. And so what does 2024 look like and what's going to be the most valuable moving forward? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Any book recommendations, Jen? My team knows I don't read. So if y'all get them, y'all get them from Justin. So Jen, this is your question, sis. I am really glad you said that because I hate reading and I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't worry, guys. I'll get a list from Justin because y'all know Justin's re always. I know right now Justin is actually reading Craig Groeschel's newest book. Mm -hmm. If you if you Amazon it, y'all will find it. But apparently it's incredible and it's some kind of leadership book. I don't know. That's all I got. Look, I I just be doing things honestly, and then I I don't. I don't, I don't read books. I got like, I, got, I don't think I have time to read books. I don't, I've, I've barely had time to watch TV. Like I maybe watch 30 minutes of TV a day. If that, like, I, I really don't watch TV. I mean, I don't, I don't have time to read books. I can't, I, I can't focus on a book to read it. I'm like, my, the words are here and I'm like thinking over here. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Katrina said podcasts. Honestly, y'all don't want to hear the podcasts I listen to because they're like, <laughs> they're like biblical ones. So they're not really <laughs> leadership sensey, but a lot of biblical stuff helps me with sensey. Um, cause you know, there's a lot of leaders in the Bible, but, um, I do listen to Craig Groeschel cause his are quick and he's fire. So if I'm actually ever needing like some some content or just some fresh like tips like he always has like really great like seven to eight minute pod you know and a lot of y'all listen to Craig Grosha I don't know Jen if there's anybody um I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this as far it's it's important to like train yourself and like feed your brain yes but listen everybody be given advice on the internet everybody be given advice and there are so many you could have like podcast a and podcast b and podcast c and they're all direct selling podcasts and they all have different freaking advice. Like keep it simple. Okay. Do your proven things with your business, do the habits, IPAs, sell, recruit, mentor. That's it. Like don't, don't be adding anything else to it. Okay. That's yeah. it. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's just, there's just not the time for all that, yeah. you know? So and also you can, you can spend your whole life training yourself and then not actually moving. I know a lot of people do that. They spend hours and hours training, but they don't actually move. So like, I'd rather see you move than train yourself. Yes. A hundred percent. That, that part, that, mm -hmm. that part, you can listen all day, but what are you doing? So yeah. that's, that's actually a great tip. Okay. So I don't think there's any more questions. So I'm going to stop the recording.